I'm not. A, I, have you ever wanted to learn something new? I mean, maybe it, maybe it wasn't a Rubik's Cube, maybe it was an instrument or a sport or a new dance on TikTok. Do, do, do. Apparently I nailed that one, yeah. Well, whatever it was, you probably thought that you just practice a few times and then boom, you'd have it down, right? Well, if you're anything like me, the reality of actually learning a new skill is not that easy. Like, I remember when I was in middle school and uh, video games were just as popular when I was in middle school as right now they are for you. I was trying to learn my middle school version of Fortnite, which was James Bond 007. And it was just what everyone played when you got together. So every sleepover, every hangout, like that's what everyone was playing. And I lost every time. I was like one of the first few people out. And I'm like, no, 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 this is this okay. Because I can just keep on practicing. I'll keep on trying and then I can kind of get caught up to my friends. Well, I kept on trying, kept on trying and kept on dying and kept on dying. I just, that's just the way it worked for me. And so what was hard about that was that like, it was cool to be good and not cool to lose all the time. So what I thought was no big deal. Forget it. I'll drop that. I'll start getting good at Madden. Now Madden's still around and it was awesome then and it's awesome now. That's cool. I'll try sports games. I'll be better at that. So I start playing that, playing that, and all of a sudden it's 47 to three and it was only a lucky field goal anyway. And there's no amount of Madden that I could play that would ever make me beat any one of you right now. And maybe you can relate. Even if what you were trying to learn or do was different, if you struggled with it, then you know the feeling I'm talking about. You know what it feels like to not think that you're enough. And for a lot of us, when we feel like we're not enough, it feels really personal. At some point, I'm sure we've all felt this way. Like we just weren't good enough or smart enough or cool enough or just enough. Unfortunately, I think that's a pretty relatable feeling because big or small, we all have reasons to not feel like we're enough. And maybe some of us feel like this because of things that we've done. We've messed up, we've made mistakes, we've done things that we're not proud of. Maybe you cheated on a test or lied to your parents or spread rumors about the new girl or called someone at school a name that you know is hurtful. Maybe you've thought about trying drugs and alcohol or snuck out to go to that party. Or maybe you gave in to some pressure from your boyfriend or girlfriend to take things further than you wanted to. And while some people in your life may know about some of these things you've struggled with, there are other things that no one knows about. Things you've done that you've hidden because you don't want others to see you the way that you see yourself. You don't want them to know that you're not enough. Or maybe you've struggled with this feeling in a different way. Some of us feel like we're not enough because we haven't done enough. Maybe you feel like you're not a good enough daughter or son or athlete or musician or friend or sibling or student. And why? Because even though you're working so hard to be good at all those things, you still feel like somehow you aren't doing enough. You're still not good enough for your friends or your coach or your parents or even Jesus. And when it comes to faith, you feel like you haven't prayed enough or read your Bible enough or shown up at church enough or done enough right things to be good enough for Jesus. See what I mean? Whether it's because of what we have done or what we haven't done, we all have reasons to feel like we're not enough. And that feeling can leave us with a lot of questions. Will my friends still be my friends if they find out what I've done? Will my family understand why this happened? Will the people in my small group feel the same way once they find out what I've done? Will my coach ever think that I'm good enough to start in the big game? Will my teacher ever give me the grade that I'm trying to earn? And what about Jesus? You may wonder, does he still love me? I mean, even if I've messed up or haven't prayed enough or haven't made enough good choices, can I really be forgiven for what I've done? Can Jesus love and forgive me for not being enough? for not doing enough. If you're struggling through questions like these, let me assure you that you are not alone. And the story we're gonna learn about today is one that will help us see exactly how Jesus feels about us, no matter how we feel about ourselves. Today, we're learning about a moment 
in the life of a guy named Zacchaeus. And like us, I think he was struggling to feel good enough. See, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and back then, tax collectors were generally hated because they were stealing from people to become rich themselves. Like, think about, uh, it's kind of like Robin Hood, except for the total opposite, right? Robin Hood would steal from the rich to give to the poor. It's not that. We're talking about stealing from the poor so he can become rich himself. So that meant that Zacchaeus had a bit of a reputation. Because of the things that he'd done, others around him definitely didn't see him as good enough. But on this particular day in Zacchaeus' life, things changed. Everything changed. Because on this day, Jesus was coming through town. And like most people back then, Zacchaeus uh, had already heard about Jesus. He knew all the cool and amazing things Jesus had done. And he wanted to get a chance, just like everybody else, to get close to Jesus. So Zacchaeus went down there where the crowds had gathered. And since he was short, that's right, the Bible literally tells us Zacchaeus was a short man. He climbed a tree to get a better look. Now, I can't know for sure, but I also have to wonder if Zacchaeus Zacchaeus climbed that tree not only because of his height, but also because he knew what other people thought of him. Or maybe he feared or was concerned about what other people thought of him. Maybe he thought that with all of his mistakes and mess ups, the crowd would think he wasn't good enough to be close to Jesus. Maybe he felt like they wouldn't welcome him there. Well, what I do know is that Jesus noticed Zacchaeus in that tree and he called out to him and he went over to Zacchaeus in the tree and called him by name and asked to be a guest in his house that very day. Crazy and unexpected, right? Well, take a look at the way the people responded. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. So basically, the people around Zacchaeus said, there's no way this guy is good enough to have Jesus come to his home. I mean, he's done so many bad things. Now, keep in mind, these were the kind of people who felt they definitely done enough. They thought that they had done all the right things, that they were the people that Jesus should have looked at, called by name, and chosen. And honestly, it would have been easy for Zacchaeus to feel like he wasn't good enough for the invitation either. I mean, he had a lot of reasons to think that. He had done a lot of wrong to a lot of people, probably to a lot of the people who were there in that crowd in that moment. But Jesus knew all of that. He knew everything Zacchaeus had done and he still made it personal. Out of all the people in the crowd, Jesus chose Zacchaeus, and in that moment, Jesus did for Zacchaeus what he does for each one of us. He breaks the barrier, all the shame and guilt and regret and fear and mistakes that we think might separate us from Jesus actually have no power to keep us from him at all. Jesus walks right through them and chooses to make it personal with us, with you. And why? Because he loves us. See. It's personal because Jesus loves you no matter what. And that means just as you are, you are enough. There's no mistake you can make that will separate you from his love. There's no choice that you need to make in order to earn his love. He loves you no matter what, and nothing you do or don't do will change that. It was true for Zacchaeus and it's true for you and it's true for me. Jesus sees everything we've done and ever will do, the good, the bad, the ugly, and he still chooses us. He still chooses you. He still loves you. It's personal because Jesus loves you no matter what. So how do we start to believe that this is true? that we are enough, that Jesus loves us, that Jesus loves you in a real and personal way, just as we are. Start by naming it. 
Name what you feel is separating you from God. Maybe you're experiencing shame or guilt over something that you did wrong, like a bad choice or a mistake. Maybe you messed up in a way that no one knows about, but you feel like it's keeping you from Jesus. Maybe for you, you feel like you haven't done enough of something and that's keeping you from Jesus. You haven't spent much time praying or reading your Bible or showing up at church and you feel like it's getting between you and Jesus. Whatever it is, name it, confess it, call it out. Identify what you feel is separating you from Jesus and tell him about it. Ask for his help, understanding and accepting his love for you just as you are. Pray that he will show you that nothing can separate you from his love. Then think about how you see or treat the people around you. Do you see them like they're not enough? Kind of like the people in the crowd saw Zacchaeus. Do you treat them like they don't deserve Jesus to go over to their house today? They don't deserve Jesus's love. Do you see others at church and think, well, they don't belong here because of what they've done, what I know that they've done, what I've heard that they've done. Ask Jesus to show you where you're not seeing others the way that he sees them and pray that he will help you change your heart. Remember, what Jesus did for us is the same thing he does for everyone. He makes it personal. He loves them no matter what, and he calls us to do the same. He asks us to make it personal for others by treating them with love and acceptance no matter what. That could look like sitting with the new girl at lunch or inviting someone shy in your class to do something with you after school, or maybe it looks like showing kindness to somebody who's hurt you in the past, or simply listening to a friend share about the mistakes that they've made. Whatever it is, take a step to make it personal for others by showing them love and acceptance no matter what, because that is what Jesus did for us. Remember, it's personal because Jesus loves you no matter what. And one reason we get in groups here is to reflect Jesus's love. Your group loves and accepts you for who you are no matter what. It's a safe place where you can get personal with others who trust and care about you. So as you go, I want you to think about this question. Do I really believe that God loves me no matter what? Now back to this Rubik's Cube.